very popular drill, Chicago drill rapper. Chicago drill is probably the most popular sound right now, Alonzo. I'll, I'll kind of hip you to, to, to what the kids are talking about. I'm out of the loop, trust me. But um, it, it's influenced the whole country and the sound. And, and a lot of the hip hop that you're hearing now is it's influenced by Chicago drill. Long story short, FBG Duck was a popular rapper out there who was killed. Uh, he was walking through a ritzy part of Chicago, which would be comparable to Rodeo Drive out here in L.A., Fifth Avenue in New York, you know, whatever the case is. And two dudes jumped out, bam, 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 shot him like seven, like a crazy amount of times right there. White people walking around with their Starbucks cups and everything. But they have a thing out there, Alonzo, and I want your opinion on this. Chicago rappers are known for dissing the dead people that they killed. They'll, they'll literally make a song. So as soon as this dude died within 24 hours, there were diss songs all over the internet. And this is something that they do. Whenever they kill somebody, they make a diss song about that other gang and how they killed him and this, this, and that. What are your thoughts on that? Because that's fucking deep. And that's something that is big right now. Man, that's downright demonic, dude. You know, it's, it's one thing, one thing that's all been, always been respected for the most part, and that's the dead, okay? You, you know, once the cat is pretty much gone, it's, it seems like his respect factor goes up even more, okay? Mm -hmm. And to kill somebody and then diss them after you killed them, you're looking for some more retaliation on, on, on some multiplication, on, on, on some serious multiplication, okay? I don't know much about it. I, I saw where he got killed, but do you realize how many rappers have died in the last past year? What, yeah. even 30 yet? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And let's, if we if we move up to thirty five, we got a whole nother group that didn't make it past thirty five, man. Meanwhile, I'm watching the news and white folks is dying at eighty nine, at ninety, eighty one, ninety two. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there going, "Is something wrong with this picture? Yeah. Is something wrong when you got mm -hmm. entertainers that's dying at ninety one? Mm -hmm. Old Jewish folks is dying at oh ninety one. You don't hear about no some folks like that man dying." Because of, uh, of a gunshot wound, you don't hear yeah. that, okay? Yeah. And I, 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 woo, let me calm down. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, and it's and to even take it to another level, I mean, the most preventable death for a white, per a young white person, is a car accident. I do believe someone can look it up and correct me if I'm wrong, but I do know this: that the number one preventable death for a young black man is murder. Right. And that's, the, that's probably the number one cause of death for most black men is murder, mm -hmm. okay? So when you, when, you, when you see that, and you marching on this, you marching on that, um, I, I, that that's, why, that's why I did Hood Peace, man, because I just feel that there's, there's, two, there's two sides to the story. We as black men, are, our lives are being snuffed out on two sides of the same candle. You got the police, you got systemic racism on one side, and you got our own people on the other side. And, you know, when you're when you are a, a black man with grandsons and young sons and nephews that you love, okay, I love these dudes, man. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get that phone call, man. I don't want I don't want to have to go do the car wash, collect the insurance check. I don't want the check, mm -hmm. okay? And this is the part, some people, but, you know, when it get killed, I, I had a dude one time, I got to say this, I had a dude tell me one time, he was going to go out and pick a fight with the police so he could get a check, okay? Look. I had a dude I know told me he was going to pick a fight with the police and get a check, and he did it. They fucked him up. He barely can talk right to this day. When he got a check, okay? So here we are, here, here, here I am, and my perspective may be a little bit, a lot more tainted than most people because I talk to a lot of people from different different walks of life. I've had a lot of different conversations. I I run venues. I've done dealt with people in masses for years, and I'm not saying um, I'm not saying it makes me an expert, but it gives me a different perspective when I hear certain things and I see the outcome. Okay, and that's why as a grown man, I can speak on certain things because I, I I remember this. I remember people saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And you did it anyway. And they told me it was going to happen. And here it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've been around long enough to see various transitions like that. They said, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Oh, I can do what I want to. Yes, you can. But you shouldn't. Maybe you shouldn't. You did it anyway. 
And now here is the consequences.